hello everyone and thank you for the introduction. Um, so I just would like to start with what um, Professor Margaret was saying. Uh, everything starts from small and then um, this was exactly the same case for Mongolia. So the Mongolian program started, it was actually a funding from Grand Challenges Canada. We had uh, $130,000. Uh, with the, we put a, a proposal saying um, fight against hepatitis uh, in Mongolia, and then that was the start of our program. <clears throat> um, so <clears throat> Mongolia is basically one of the, well, the country with highest liver disease burden, and then uh, as you can see here that we have very high uh, liver cancer mortality. Um, this is actually highest in the world, but when uh, 2013, when we started, the government was not aware of this. It was uh, very um, appalling to see that uh, the whole, whole healthcare system that's functioning, that's reasonably good system, still didn't know that was actually a huge problem. Um, then the other thing was that, um, well, that was actually 15% of total mortality. The, one of the problem really was that no one was looking at the data. They collected a lot of data every year. They have put out the statistics, but no one in the policy making position was looking at this data. Um, so then we have done this study looking at the prevalence um, of hepatitis B and C in Mongolia. And then when we come up with saying, okay, we have done a randomized uh, survey of 1,200 people, and this is our prevalence in the country, uh, our Minister of Health said, you are kidding. You cannot say from 1,000 people you have this much of disease. And you cannot estimate that we have 150,000 people living with hepatitis C. So that was 2014, that was our story. Um, further, the even worse thing was that we not, do not only have hepatitis B and hepatitis C, on top of that, about 60% of all our hepatitis B patients have uh, co-infection of hepatitis delta. Um, so we, from that study, we estimated basically coming up saying that we have 400,000 people out of uh, 3 million people in Mongolia living with chronic liver disease. And everyone got into basically frenzy. You are, you must be kidding. This cannot be. This is not possible. But then it turned out we have um, 76 parliament members. We were able to identify 10 of them actually have hepatitis C. And they were trying to get treatment. And some of them, three of them actually heard of the new treatment. While in the country we were having this whole debate of if um, there was this uh, DAA coming up from Gilead, if this was true or not, there were three guys actually at the parliament members. They were going to Singapore getting the treatment for $95,000. And then we came up to them and saying, like, look, uh, we have this much of a disease. You cannot just be curing yourselves. We have to do something about it. And then with all this data, we were able to actually convince the policymakers to do something about this terrible, terrible state of the uh, healthcare problem. And then when we started in 2014, for example, the uh, first uh, pink one showing that screening tests and uh, viral load testing, it was unaffordable. So um, just to uh, put a perspective on how, much, how, how expensive it was, a uh, normal Mongolian person would earn somewhere around 200 to $250 per month. So you are basically uh, paying almost half of your salary to get a viral load done. So it was just impossible. Um, uh, also, the pricing of the uh, drugs were also very expensive. So we basically made sure that this uh, pricing goes down because without um, access to the treatment or access to the diagnosis, it was not possible to talk about anything about even elimination, uh, even a control or even having some sort of treatment for the people. Uh, so we have, um, uh, as an NGO, it's a quite small NGO, on the foundation we have about 20, uh, 20 people employed. Uh, we have actually 
In 2015, we announced our program in the public without the government support, saying, okay, we are gonna eliminate hepatitis C in Mongolia. And we called the program Hepatitis Prevention Control and Elimination Program, trying to give the gist of, we are not only wanting to eliminate hepatitis C, we want to control hepatitis B, we want to actually prevent the diseases, uh, disease complications of liver cancer and liver cirrhosis. And 2016, it was the election year, uh, all the big parties actually come on board with our program, and um, one of the party actually adopted everything what we have uh, drawn up uh, as their general election platform, and it was 2016 uh, October, it actually adopted as a government program. <coughs> so since the adoption of the program, we have uh, all the hepatitis C treatments are uh, especially the suppose we the deep sphere is actually for free, but suppose we're the cloud sphere, we only need it for a very small percentage of the population because of we have about 98% of the hepatitis C population have 1B genotype. So uh, it's fairly affordable and all the diagnostic tests are for free. Uh, so as part of the program, what um, uh, the program is basically having three main uh, elements, prevention campaign, control, uh, prevention campaign, screening campaign, and treatment campaign, and all of these components having a research component to uh, support and uh, change the program and modify the program. So uh, as part of the screening campaign, we um, put the aim of saying that um, Mongolian population, out of Mongolian um, 3 million population, we want to screen everyone above 15 years old. So that's about 2.2 million people. And so far we have screened about 1 million uh, people. And out of that one, uh, we have identified 95K um, anti-HCV positives and uh, HPACG positives, about 71,000 uh, people. Uh, it, the program is going all around the country. And then just um, to give you a little bit of perspective how it has changed since 2015 to now 2019 is that 2015 we were, uh, we have done an estimation of how much we are diagnosing and how much we are treating. Uh, so this is actually an our estimation. So we have uh, data showing that between 2010 to 2015, as a country, we have treated 300 people with hepatitis C. So um, since 2016, um, December, we have treated now 52,000 people and screened uh, newly identified 95,000 uh, people with uh, anti-HCV positivity. Uh, so, um, with, despite our study estimated about 150,000 people, uh, since our study was only uh, something only four provinces, we have 21 provinces, and it has uh, Mongolia. Is a, despite we having this uh, only three million people, it's a huge country with a, uh, it's something. I think it's like four times the Germany size. So there's a lot of geographical. Um, diversification and then now with our screening program we are estimating we are uh, supposed to treat somewhere around 120,000 people so that's our a bit more fine-tuned estimation so that's our target uh, we have currently identified 95,000 of them uh, and then out of that we have now treated uh, 52,000 um, and here actually our program currently have the weakest point is that despite we have uh, dispatched all the treatment and we know who that 52,000 people got the treatment, we don't have really reliable data on the SVR rate. So we are currently working on to improve that. Uh, so if we assume somewhere around 85% uh, SVR, we ha have, should have uh, treated, uh, cured something like 44,000. Uh, despite our registry system is not perfectly well. We have a good data, at least in Ulaanbaatar, so that's half of the population lives. Uh, we have done a study in 2013. Um, it's a random sampled uh, study, and then we have repeated that after five years uh, in 2018, and then from that study what we can see is that um, in 2000, uh, 13, we had uh, HTVR net detectability somewhere around 78%. 79% of the population we, uh, had uh, 
anti-HCV positivity. Now when we do it, uh, it's about um, 37, 35%. So from that, we are basically saying that we have uh, already cured 33,000. And if we think about the bigger number, we are um, estimating that 44,000 actually treated in the country. And actually, we are treating mainly the people in UB or the, in the capital city. So that's why we looked at, OK, now program, um, our program seems to be running really well in UB, but how do we do the rural areas? Uh, so. <clears throat> Currently, um, uh, we have done uh, quite few estimations and uh, assessments, and one of the there were basically two main barriers why the countryside is not getting really good treatment rate. Not really uh, the screening wise, they do really well, but the treatment and the diagnosis wise, they are not doing really well. And the main two barriers is that one is having the diagnostic tests ready for them, and the main reason for that is that we have. Uh, all the viral load testing labs are in Nordlambatter, so they have to bring the blood samples from countryside, and especially the ones who are living in the county, they don't have access to it. So uh, we are working with CIFAID and trying to bring uh, equipments to the county level and then trying to do the diagnosis. The second barrier was the uh, doctors, basically. We were uh, initially, in the beginning of the program, we only were focusing on uh, secondary or tertiary care uh, doctors treating the patients. Now, uh, in last six years, uh, six months, <laughs> we have been expanding it to the primary care. So um, all the work about this uh, 52,000 people's treatment was done through about 210 doctors working at the secondary or higher level. Uh, now we have added another um, 200 uh, doctors who are working at the primary care, uh, GP clinics, and the county clinics. Uh, but one of the things, um, when we started rolling this out, one of the problems was that the primary care doctors are actually not very confident to do the prescription. Despite they have the right to do it, they were not really confident. So what, uh, for this um, particular county, uh, who has a population of somewhere around 4,000 and target population is about 2,645. Uh, we have um, two doctors who are prescribing, but they were not doing much. So we brought them into our clinic and trained them for our 10 days, and then we hooked them up to a, a Project Echo style, also to our um, cloud-based system, so they can actually treat uh, and have the direct advice from the doctors who have been treating and would have a lot of experience. So we have run this um, pilot uh, in this uh, county, brought the CIFAID machine there and uh, trained the lab person. And the uh, interesting thing was that um, in the last two years, they have screened about 1,300 people. And, but they, within this pilot period, only one month, they have screened uh, 726 people. Um, actually, in terms of viral load, obviously, they have done a lot more. They have only done four before. Uh, but during this uh, one month of period, they have done 20, uh, 34. And also treatment-wise, actually, they have increased dramatically. So it's three times the amount. So basically, this pilot is showing that um, now, pr in order to reach the target, we really need to start addressing all these county people who are living in rural areas, and it's actually quite possible, and it does not uh, add a lot of costs, because we are hooking them up to the cloud-based system. Uh, so currently, the plan is that we are going to, uh, we have divided up all the tertiary care hospitals and doctors to uh, the counties, aligned to, um, aligned to the counties, and they, were, they are supposed to uh, consult and monitor the patients with the primary care doctors. And uh, I think it's going to be uh, the next push in order to reach our elimination goal. Our goal is actually 2020. But uh, with the current estimation, I, uh, we don't think that we are going to reach exactly 2020. But our estimation is that by 2023, we are going to reach our target. Uh, so, uh, well, that I already said. So, the one of the things um, in our program, what we really see is that it's a teamwork. It's a 
a lot of task share needs to be happened in order to have this kind of program running. Uh, currently, our program is really a private-public partnership example, and it's a, uh, we have private hospitals work, private labs work in the, um, into the whole scheme of things, and then the government is involving every NGO, every uh, professional, every private clinics or uh, labs, they are doing testing, etc. So I think it's a uh, really an example in the sense that trying to bring everyone together to a same goal and then trying to eliminate the uh, one of the really one of the biggest problem in Mongolian society. Um, and one of the things I would like to say is that uh, when we started on this journey, it was we have done it was a, a lot in a lot of senses it was a personal um, journey because uh, my parents both uh, of, of them had hepatitis C and my mom was actually a, a blood donor and don't know how many actually she infected uh, it was really important for us that having this passion and having this uh, bringing together people with the passion, and that was actually the, I think, main ingredient of the success for the program. Uh, so hopefully that uh, the people who are in this room also have that passion, and ho hopefully that we can have, and by 2030, have a, uh, if not eliminated after all the uh, virus, um, hepatitis viruses, but at least have a, a good, uh, in comparison to now, at least we would have a really good stage and hopefully uh, we work together to create that kind of uh, new world. Thank you.